What's up guys? Hey, and welcome back to another twin motion video. I know it's been a long time. You know, that's what happens when you buy a house, you know, things got to happen. It's, it is is what it is. So for right now, I'm back, but we are back here with twin motion. My gosh, when I saw this, wow, I know we're a few days late, but nonetheless, twin motion 2023.1 that already came out, but this is preview number two. And it, if it doesn't speak for itself right now, then I don't know what does, but my gosh, I know we're about to get into it. So like, let's first say this, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out quite a lot because we're about to look at new, brand new, beautiful looking twin motion updates. I'm so excited. Okay, here we go. So obviously you can see just, they laid it out all on a platter for us. Just immediately, boom, hits you right in the face. And my gosh, if it doesn't, then you're using the wrong version of twin motion. Obviously. I mean, look at this. Uh, I knew through the grapevine and posts and whatnot that they were working on an update to the UI, but can, are you kidding me? Look at this. This is amazing. So I have my own criticisms. I have my own thoughts, not really that many criticism, but I have my own thoughts. And I'm going to say that specifically for a brand new overhaul twin motion UI video, because uh, there's a lot here. There's a lot to digest. Granted, I will say if you are familiar with what to expect when it comes to certain tools and locations of tools within twin motion, then you're going to be fine. It'll take you a few minutes to adjust to it, but in the end, you're really going to like it. So the few things we'll look at here is like, obviously everything on the left panel is basically the same. You know, they have it all here, but the nice thing is you can see, this is the whole left panel. We, we're not interrupted by this uh, ridiculous horizontal business here at the bottom. Uh, obviously very good. We have the stats here. It's pop. In. A lot of these are like pop in, pop out, look at it as you need to and give you the most real estate, you know, bang for your buck when it comes to screen space, which, which is great. That's the way to do it. That's the way to build the UI. So everything else is essentially as is here. But as we move up here to the top, we've got path tracer. Uh, you can kind of think that everything up here was down here. Now I, I don't like it up here as much, but whatever, it doesn't matter. It's all the same. What was here is now up there. Uh, the nice thing is that it is just centering everything that you really care about right there in the middle. You know I mean? Come on. And then from here, obviously the import is the same, but really everything across the bottom now, like we have this entire bottom bar and a lot of it is what you've seen, obviously import. Um, we've got materials here. Uh, we can populate, but you'll see as I do this, I can even like collapse the bottom bar, which is awesome. Again, real estate in mind, um, materials here. Yeah. We can just basically make one, add one, uh, populate populates <laughs> this bar at the right. Now the, the, I would say the newest addition to the UI is this bar at the right, because everything kind of funnels through here. If it isn't by default on the left side, it's just kind of the way it is. Uh, but the cool thing is here, again, you've seen all these things before they're just organized in a different way which is really great. And so here are the tools that work with these paths below and all this, uh, which is great. You know, all this is wonderful. So cool. And then obviously we move on to media and we, we're familiar with all of these. There's nothing new here in a sense to where it's just all the different export options, different media options, things like that. And then obviously export again, the nice thing that we really see here is this properties panel. Basically have I clicked something? And if so, I should probably look at the properties that makes sense. And you can see there's literally properties here and I can literally just collapse it. It goes away. If it's not blue, it's not there. Even if I click on this, but as soon as I click on something new with properties, it will, it will show itself, which is great. Um, but the cool thing here is obviously I can expand anything. I can choose to look at the whole screen if I want, which without even being in like the preview mode, which is awesome. Or like the, the fancy presenter mode, that is really cool. So obviously we want to look at a, a more traditional scene that we're used to, like we're used to seeing this, um, which is great. But uh, looking at the UI, the rest of the UI here is essentially the same. Uh, we don't quite have a burger menu, which is fine because we've always had the real menu here and file and edit. That's fine. Um, one thing that you will be looking for, are like all the view settings. Um, but you can see here in the scene graph, we always have had the scene graph. That's great. Uh, but we have this ambiance and ambiance again it's going to be in the properties if i click properties and here it is and this is really pretty and obviously this is everything when it comes to the view and what you're looking at in the ui but it's everything for where you are familiar with but it's just the properties of the view and it is a physical element that falls within the scene 
the, like the whole scene graph. It's cool. I like it. And it, it, again, all the settings you've seen before, not a big deal. The one final thing I want to cover with the UI is you'll notice this. Uh, I don't really have the best way to describe it other than it looks like a Nintendo Switch. Uh, but besides that, um, you've got one side that's highlighted. And so let's click this and we can literally expand it. And so in a sense, we're kind of customizing our UI. Now we don't really have the ability to drag this around and, and do anything that we want, but I can, I basically have relocated my properties panel if I want to just for like that one instance. And that means I have more real estate for my properties. If I have a ton of properties like I do here, or maybe it's a, an elaborate material or something, uh, that kind of thing. I don't, I can't see myself doing that all the time because I have enough space, but I can see as I have my scene graph here taking up a lot of space, I want to have a separate properties panel. That's cool. Uh, I can also see this working really well. If you have an ultra wide, like myself, I'd recommend that too, because uh, that space that can be dedicated to something, you know, long and tall like this. And then you have plenty of screen space elsewhere, but uh, regardless, I cool. It's cool. I like this and you can always put it back. Not a big deal. Um, obviously our X, Y is just a specific object, but then finally view sets, uh, view sets might sound new, but it's actually not. Um, you can think of this as view states. Um, I never really liked the you know wording of view states because obviously it's the state in which a view is in, but view set makes it seem like, Hey, I've saved this view and all of these models and elements looking this way. So I can go back to it looking exactly like this. And that's basically what a view set is. So it's a, the exact same. It functions the same again. We'll go over that later. Not a big deal. All right. That's the UI. I love it. I'm looking at some of the other updates that were, were within twin motion, 2023.1 preview two. my gosh, I wonder when the real release will come out hopefully soon. We've got viewport scaling. So this is along the lines of some of something UI, but if we go up here to edit and preferences, so obviously there's a lot here that we've seen before. Um, this is not so much what we're really want to look at. Um, but when it comes to the quality, yeah, this is all kind of here again, kind of the same stuff, uh, but appearance, we can see appearance interface scale. And so this is going to directly change the entire UI, the scale of the entire UI. So if this goes up and I press okay, you can see that everything in my viewport here got smaller, but these, icons are much larger. Now I don't like that at all. And to be honest with you, I kind of want to go the other way. Now this is totally up to you and dependent on a lot of things, um, size of your monitor resolution, aspect ratio, you name it. But honestly, this looks really good. Um, thankfully my eyes still work well enough for me to be able to see these pretty well, but this just means I have so much more screen space, even with everything visible. So again, totally up to you, but for the sake of this video, let's put it back to 100%. So you can see things <laughs> my gosh. And then finally we have some new path tracer features. Um, there's nothing really to show with the path tracer other than here it is. Uh, we can see obviously it working, but it, it now supports decals, um, has a better, like improved height fog. Like so literally the height fog will show up with path ratio, which is, which is cool, um, improved atmospheric rendering along the same lines of the fog. But, um, that also includes the sky color and the light scattering. So we're going to see all of that when it comes to environments, which is awesome. That's really good. Um, again, back at the settings, this is not a huge deal for me because this is, you know, maybe 10, 15 years ago, this would have been uh, really game changing, but we can see, obviously we have graphic hardware support. That's perfectly fine. But under the path tracer, we specifically now, yeah, we have all our settings, but we have specific support for multi graphic processing unit or video card, whatever you want to call it, uh, multi GPU support. So if you have two NVIDIA cards, you can have them in SLI or AMD, you can use cross fire fire that like, that's fine. Um, it's the type of thing that will obviously improve your performance because it twin motion can now t fully take advantage of that. I have not seen that to be necessary whatsoever, um, mainly from because of what I'm working on is nothing gigantic, but uh, you know, it kind of is what it is. We we now actually have the ability to uh, export. If we go to File and Export, uh, we can export our credits, and these credits refer to all of the models that we use from Sketchfab, and it's basically crediting the original artist, and you can get that exported as a CSV. Uh, for your knowledge, for sharing it along with your exported uh, scene, anything like that. If you need that, it's there. It's cool. It's nice that it's really easy to do because obviously it's really easy to pull in all these sketch fab models really quickly. 
But if you want to credit and basically back yourself up that you didn't, you're not claiming that as your own, yeah, totally do that. File export credits. Very easy to do, and that's cool. Uh, this is really interesting. This is uh, maybe something that was in the pipeline I didn't really end up paying attention to, but uh, nonetheless, it's pretty cool. We can take these containers, and you can kind of think of these folders as containers, but they're what they're called. You can see create subcontainer or move to new container, or set active container, that kind of thing. They're all containers if they're these folders. Um, but now we can scale not just a single element because we've always been able to do that. You, if you click tab here and I zoom in and we see I can change this to all the different gizmos, but here's my scale. I can obviously scale this uh, in any direction that I want all the time, but um, I can actually take this entire starting base because it includes the pedestal, the cylinder, uh, this particular graphic and a sphere. I can include all of that within my selection just by selecting the base and I can scale all of that. Now it only works uniformly, but that's perfectly fine. Um, at least that's a start. Like I don't need to actually do anything weird in one direction or one axis. That, that's not a huge deal, but I can scale everything in the container, which means I can put whatever I need to in the container and then just boom all at once uniformly, which is really great stuff. That's really good. Uh, we have some more like high quality reflections if it within the import. So like obviously um, as you import something, go to uh, import here, the plus as we import things here, just another checkbox is going to be uh, full precision normals. If we can achieve that, uh, basically we, we get the full precise reflections using the normals, the normals being all of the directions that are basically perpendicular to that particular face. Um, if we just, oh, you just have to check that in the import window. It's very simple. It improves reflections of anything you import. And it's something I would totally do because not that reflections are the worst thing into emotion. They're actually pretty good if you know how to really take advantage of them, but they, the fact that they're improved now is fantastic. That is really cool. Uh, IES lights, in addition to fixing certain regressions that were introduced in previous builds, uh, the functionality of IES lights has been improved. It's now possible to import non-symmetric IES files and render them accurately. Well, it's the type of thing that you assumed, right? If you go to lights and you can see all these IES lights and that, uh, that applies to these, of course, but I assume they have always kind of wrapped these up pretty well. But if I put this light down, my thought is um, regardless of the IES that's on here by default, my thought is that, okay, it's, it's working no matter what, you know, that that's kind of a safe assumption in my mind. Uh, but that may not necessarily be the case. Um, just kind of is what it is at that point. So if I click on this light, go to properties, come all the way down here to miscellaneous, I can see IES, I can literally, obviously, choose another one, um, in this case, just import one. Uh, but there, what the new update is saying is, uh, if I have an IES light that is kind of we want to one side and there are, I don't even know if there are a couple of, now these are all symmetrical. So the point being is now if you import non-symmetrical IES profiles, then you're likely to get a very much accurate, more accurate, uh, true model, true reflections, true lighting from that, which is cool. Like that's the type of thing that you would expect you know, um, so I haven't had that issue because mainly I'm using these. These are good enough for the most part, but I have used IES profiles in the past because I needed to see something a very specific way that a light manufacturer had. And I knew we were using this light and this light needed to be in there in a very particular way, in a particular place. And so that's where it was used. Okay, we've got some UV mapping of primitives. And so <laughs> this is kind of funny. If you've ever used primitives, which I've used them a decent amount. If we go to objects, your primitives, there's obviously a ton. And let's just say this box. A lot of times what I've done in the past is I'll just take a box and no matter what I'm doing, I'm just gonna throw a material on it. It does not matter at all. Um, but we put this material on and we start to scale it up and down or better yet, literally if we start changing the scale of this box <laughs> some of these uvs start looking weird now i will say because like as as drastic as that scale change was that the material is pretty good obviously it's stretched and it's i need to change the skate literal scale of the material but this is not bad at all before 
in previous versions of twin motion, this would just stretch everything out of the material and it would just look terrible. And so I, I'm encouraged to see this because now I feel better about using primitives. It's really easy to dump them in, throw material on it, be done with it. It looks good. You know, it's, it's all native and it's really easy to manipulate, but now it actually looks right, which is great. That's really good to see. And so besides some other little things that really don't matter, I'm going to leave uh, a link to all of the updates, including all the bug fixes. I would encourage you to read through, um, not necessarily everything that we just covered, but that'd be good too. But as well, look at through the bugs that are fixed because they'll give you an idea of uh, what they're addressing. I mean, that, that's a huge thing. And, but also uh, known bugs and limitations. That is, I make sure to read that every single time because it's really important. Um, there might be something that says, oh yeah, if, if you move this material and add this material to this type of model, it, it's gonna crash. Like that type of thing is great to know. <laughs> Uh, no, they're not all like that, thank goodness. Uh, but a lot of things there will tell you uh, some of the issues that they're aware of, and maybe you'll be aware of them at that point too. But the nice thing is that you can start looking for those in future updates and to make sure they're they're getting taken care of, which is really good. And I've seen a lot of them checked off, uh, which is great to see. I don't know if I'm the only one, but I've had significant performance improvements, especially over the last year. Uh, but two years, obviously, it's just, I don't, I don't get the crashes like I used to, which is awesome. That's really great to see. So that was it for all of the twin motion 20, 23.1 preview two updates, quite a lot. And, um, that's perfectly fine. We are going to go break these down into other videos, especially the UI. There's a lot here with the UI, uh, more I want to talk about just in depth about my thoughts. Um, not necessarily just my thoughts, but you know, what this really means because, because there's some implications to it. So stick around for that. I will see you as soon as I can. More videos to come. Do not worry. I am always here for you. I hope you demolish that like button and that you do end up enjoying this video and that you learn something and that you look forward to the true release of Twin Motion 2023 because it's coming soon and it's they're not just gonna, they're not just going to remove these previews off of the title of the year and be done with it. No, they're going to have some more heavy hitters with that one, I'm sure of it. So, I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.